The first point in the first category in which we're going to talk about this morning are husbands and wives. Husbands and wives. Verse 18 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Wives is not talking about single ladies submitting to just any man. That's not what they're talking about here. And that word submit is really means subject to. The, the root word is a military term. To arrange under rank. To arrange under rank. And I know there is a, a ton of military, ex-military, father was in the military, mother was in the military, people in here. And even in my service, I never once thought somebody else was more important than me or better than me because of their rank. I just thought that they arrived to it quicker than I did. But I had to submit to that individual because of the ranking Order. So submission, a lot of times, has to do more of kind of situational responsibility, both good and bad. What submission does not mean is that you're inferior. Submission does not mean inferiority. Submission is not absolute. It is not absolute. It doesn't mean that you submit to everything under the sun. In fact, in Acts, Luke tells us, chapter 529, it says, Talking to the Peter and John, says, you choose whether you ought to obey God or men. So wives, sometimes the, the husband will say something that is not godly. Or ask you to submit to something that is outside of God's will. That is not what I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of a loving relationship, mutual sacrifice between one another, coming under willingly. Submission is love. Verse 14 reminds us of that. And above all, these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. That is the submission, that mutual submission with one another. I would argue that submission shows strength. It shows assurance. It shows patience. And even that meekness that we defined a couple weeks ago. Meekness is Power under control. It doesn't mean that you don't have power. It just means that you are controlling it in this circumstance to submit under your husband. In the Roman world, just like it is today, and Paul would have been writing, ultimately, wives could want to leave their husbands for somebody better. For somebody better. And what Paul is trying to say is, maybe that somebody better is your current husband as he becomes a Christian and grows in Christ. Because what is a wife able to do? Come alongside, encourage, and support. Many of men found their way with the Lord from a praying woman alongside them. Encouraging, supporting, and loving them. You also notice it says, submit to your husband. Your husband. Not just any man on the street who says, woman, submit to me. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a mutual, loving relationship that you left your, your mom and dad, and they left their mom and dad, and you cleave together. Yours. Possession together. This is my wife. My wife, I am her husband. We are together in a loving relationship. There's something very intimate there. Something very personal. So what's the reason why a wife should submit? Why? Because it says it is fitting in the Lord. It is fitting in the Lord. You see, God is an orderly God. God is an orderly God. We see that 1 Corinthians 14, 40. But all things should be done decently and in order. You see, if, if there is no order, even in the family, there is chaos. There is disunity. People are doing their own things. And so God has designed this way for order in the family. Ultimately, Ephesians 5.21 even tells us both the husband and wife will submit to the Lord. It says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. That mutual submission, the power to submit, it ultimately comes from the Lord. And I get it. I understand that there are people struggling with this concept right here. Because the society has pushed this, has pushed this for 50, 60, 70 years, have pushed this struggling of submission. In fact, there's books written 
that talk about that this verse, verse 18, was only cultural for a specific time. It's no longer relevant. It's only cultural. My argument, though, is if it's cultural and wives should not have to submit because it was only for a time. In fact, they said the reason why women had to submit is to keep them from upsetting the society. From upsetting the society. So if that is cultural in verse 18, is verse 19 only cultural? Should husbands not love their wives? Because you can't have verse 18, you can't, you can't not take that into consideration, but then want the other thing. So my question to those authors is, okay, you don't think that you should submit because it was cultural, but do you think that your husband should love you, or is that cultural too? We cannot have an a la carte version of Scripture. I know Blake talked about Costco and, and Sam's, and you go and get to pick what you want. That's not how this works. You get it. That's why we're going to preach it. For one thing, you get the other thing. You may not like it. That's okay. But it still doesn't make it not the truth. The reason, because it's fitting to the Lord. Now husbands, 19. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh with them. I wanted to start with this, honestly. Because I think this is the, the foundation of which we start. Husbands loving your wives. But it wasn't in order, so we're going to stick with the way it is. The Greek rendering of this text says, You husbands, keep on loving your wives. Stop being bitter towards them. The husband, I like this quote, the husband's primacy is not for dominion. So, hey, the husband's job is not to rule over, is what I'm saying. But for guidance with sweetness, wisdom, and peace. I love that. A husband being sweet and wise and peaceful. So the statement here for the husbands, quite simply, love your wives. Keep loving them. Keep loving them because if you do not, bitterness will creep in. This love right here, it's a, it's a word we talk about in Scripture. It's that agape love, that godly, sacrificial love that he gives us. In fact, if you've ever been to a wedding, you would have heard someone read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 6. Love is patient. Love is kind. This is the love, by the way, he's talking about. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, men. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at the wrongdoing. It is not, I told you so. But rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Avoid harshness and bitterness. That love needs to be cared for. You cannot plant the seed and walk away. You have to water, tend, protect that seed so it can grow. When someone comes to me in counseling or in conversation and they say, I had just fallen out of love. Most likely in that circumstance, that individual stopped cultivating their love. They stopped sacrificing for, the, for that person across the table. They've, they've got their own interests, their own things. They, they're doing their own stuff. They're being selfish and they're moving a direction. And they forgot to sacrifice. We need to avoid that harshness. We need to avoid harshness. There is power in love. There is power in love. There was a hospital that did an experiment in a child's nursery. And if you've ever been or seen a nursery, you see that when one baby cries, another baby cries, and then another baby cries, and depending on how many babies are in there, it could be a bad day for the nurses. They recognize this. How do we stop that first baby from crying? Or how do we eliminate the length of that crying? And so they started experimenting with different sounds in the nursery. And they found one that worked. You see, they played the mother's heartbeat to the child. And it soothed them. The love of a mother soothed the child. The power of the love, that same power, the breath that God gave us pulses through our veins and allows our heart to beat that love, that strength of that love that husbands need to have for their wives. Sacrificial love. And it's hard. And it's difficult. And sometimes you don't want to be with that person. But that's not in here. It says love them continuously. Continuously. 
She is going to submit in all your faults, and you're going to love her in all of her faults. That is what the Word tells us. There's parallel scripture if you want to look it up. In Ephesians 5, it talks about how Christ loves the church as the model for us in a a relationship. So why should we love our wives? The reason is to avoid harshness and maintain unity. That word harsh is prekrano in the Greek. It basically talks about to irritate or to exacerbate. I think of a sliver if you ever had one. And it may sting a little bit, but it just gets worse and worse. And I've seen someone who did not tend to a sliver in their hand and their thumb swelled up and it was red and irritated and then had to have be surgically removed. And that is what happens when you start to be bitter towards something. It grows and grows and grows and it starts to separate you from your partner. The only other time that word is actually used in Scripture was to describe something that is distasteful or unenjoyable. The harshness can come in quickly to divide the family. There is a side note in verse 18 and 19. I just want to point something out. We talk about wives obeying their husbands and husbands loving their wives. I want to say something to the men. There is a shortage of godly men who are willing to step up and be the type of man that young women can submit to. That's the truth. There is a shortage. There is a cry in the wilderness, men, for them to see somebody to step up so they can come alongside and co-labor in the Lord with. Submit to someone who is following Christ with all their heart. Whether it's disengaged fathers in our society, whether it's the world's focus against biblical masculinity, whether it's an effective campaign by the enemy, there is a shortage. You can't expect women to submit to you if A, one, you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're not leading biblically. You cannot expect that. And you cannot expect a woman to follow you if you refuse to love them continually. You cannot expect that. We are failing as men in our society to do that. It starts first in the family, then it goes to the church, and then it goes to the society. And that is where the failure is. We are wanting, see, men, we're wanting submission without wanting to give the love. It doesn't work that way. 